This video features the animated short Virtual Private Nonsense, followed by commentary from Ron Gula about virtual private networks. So do you guys use protection? Of course I'm talking about my virtual private network. I'm sure it's keeping me safe when I'm buying Romanian Bitcoin and streaming the latest hand cam movies from that torrent site in South Korea. I used to use a VPN because I didn't trust the folks at Starbucks. Now I don't trust the folks at Apple or Facebook since I'm pretty sure they can see what I'm doing on my phone. My friend Jacob got ransomware after using a VPN to hide his tracks, going to an off-market sports tip site. The Russian hackers actually gave him a discount because the VPN to hid their attack from the FBI. <laughs> or was it the NSA? I forget which government agency is supposed to be protecting us. <laughs> Hey, Greg, what you watching? Godzilla versus Jupiter X. I didn't think that was streaming yet. I'm watching it from a friend of mine's server in South Korea. Wait, you don't have any friends here. Aren't you worried about online strangers? I'm not. I'm watching it over my VPN. I was in Australia this morning. Beautiful country. Fast internet. They have all these shows I can't find in the U.S. But I couldn't find Mork and Mindy, so I had to go to Brazil. Wait, you were in Australia, then Brazil, but they are not even close. I was on my VPN. Why, yes, I'd like to lose weight without dieting. Oh, credit card? Yes, texting it now. Aren't you the least worried that could be a scam and they are stealing your credit card? Nah, my phone is on a VPN as well. <laughs> oh, snap, I forgot. The team has a raid tonight. I have that new Godzilla Fortnite skin. Isn't that expensive? Not at all. I downloaded this cracked version of Fortnite with all the skins at a much lower price. Just had to hook my Bitcoin wallet to the game. Again. Aren't you worried about... Look I'm good, I downloaded the cracked Fortnite. I know, over the VPN. I think we need to go visit your VPN supplier. <laughs> This is where you got your VPN. I saw an ad in a review online. They had five stars! But I don't have any Bitcoin to pay. No Bitcoin, no two-factor for you, one year. <laughs> How can I help you? My friend Greg bought your VPN. We had some questions. Where do you host it at? Armenia. <laughs> My brother Shventel runs the VPN farm in a government data center. Is it secure? Oh yes, there are many armed guards and no one can see what he is collecting. I mean, routing. Are you spying on your customers? How untrusting. We are not spying. We sell marketing data like who you are and which websites you go to. You would not believe how popular Godzilla vs. Jupiter X is right now. Greg, come let's go. You really need to remove that VPN and add some better threat protection to your online browsing. Yeah, this guy's a real virtual private Nazi. No VPN for you, one year. <laughs> Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures, and in this week's video, we're talking about some of the benefits, but mostly weaknesses or misconceptions of virtual private networks. 
Now, VPNs, from the general public's point of view, we've kind of communicated as an industry that they protect your privacy. But in 2024, most of the attacks that users are going to have thrown against them, most VPN providers do nothing to stop. And that's kind of a shocking statement. Now, I've done videos like this before. I did you know, security myths where we talk about how things like you know, two-factor authentication, it, yes, it secures you going to the bank, but if the bank gets compromised, you're still kind of on the hook to know your data is out there and patching, you know, patches you from known exploits, there's still zero days, right? So a VPN at the end of the day, by definition, only encrypts traffic from point A to point B. And for most of the general public who use the VPN for privacy, it really means point A to point B at the internet. And what that really means is they just move their internet egress point to wherever the ISP of the or the data center or the VPN service that they're they're holding. And it, if the VPN that they're working with is a little shady, maybe that VPN is going to sell their data and where they're going the same way that maybe a Comcast or a Verizon does for uh, you know for, for your home users. But what I really want to talk about is does the VPN do these commercial privacy VPNs? Do they really stop attacks? And the short answer is if you look at all the different attacks that are out there, email-based attacks, email phishing attacks, email malware delivery, you know, uh, go into a compromised website and downloading malware, those are not going to be stopped by the VPNs for a shocking reason. And that reason is your traffic is already encrypted. And this is one of those weird things that, you know, we've done in our industry. We've made, tried to make things secure really well. A lot of times the security prevents analysis of the traffic that we're actually carrying. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you go to a website and it's got an S in front of it, there's a lot more cryptography and encryption going on. But what that means is that your web browser or your application is communicating to another website where the certificates and the, the, the cryptography that's in place is working well enough that they can establish an encrypted session and that the traffic between your web browser and that site is encrypted which means if you're downloading a hostile email attachment, perhaps a Word document with a zero day in it or some hostile JavaScript from a website that has a match cart downloader or something like that, it means that the VPN company can't see inside that because it's encrypted. Now, what can VPN people do? On the outside of that section, probably before you go to the internet, they could do URL filtering, maybe they could do DNS filtering, uh, maybe they can even do some threat list filtering. And those are all really valid strategies. We've got companies in our portfolio, DNS Filter, Threader, that can help with that. And even on the inside of that VPN, if you're running out of a browser, you can use things like Pixum and Conceal to do uh, prevention and analysis of those websites that you're going to. But the VPN itself inside that tunnel that's encrypted, carrying encrypted traffic, there's really almost no analysis going on in there. And if you think about downloading an attachment from Gmail on a personal side, you know, email G Suite product or a personal Gmail, there's not a lot of traffic that's going to analyze that because no one's going to blacklist or say that the Google itself is a threat. You're going to download that file right away. So what can we do? Well, one of the things I want to talk about is the use of break and inspect technology that happens in large enterprises and one of our portfolio companies called Trinity Cyber. Now, Trinity Cyber is a company that takes, it carries network traffic with break and inspect, and it carries it through their multiple pops, and it basically does full content inspection, and it will remove malware and exploits and botnet traffic. Hi there, I'm Professor Kurt, and Ron is not doing a very good job explaining what break and inspect is. To enable TLS break and inspect, additional certificates, not software, are installed on the computers you want to protect. These certificates work alongside the existing ones in your browser and operating system. Any TLS network traffic that is collected from these computers can be decrypted and inspected for malicious content. In Trinity's case, the traffic is edited, removing malware and malicious code from documents and web content in real time. The last step is to re-encrypt the traffic for normal, secure internet browsing. This process occurs for TLS traffic coming into and out of your network. The core issue is balancing privacy with security. 
Security systems without break and inspect rely on endpoint tools that still collect sensitive data from users' devices to detect threats. TLS break and inspect solutions, like Trinity Cybers, allow full content inspection, preventing hackers and nation states from entering your network. Both going to clients, as well as be, or exfiltrating data and going to hostile sites. So I'm gonna switch over to my laptop here. I've got a bunch of uh, exploits that I've, uh, I've already kind of preloaded here and uh, downloading them, great, great download demo. Um, anybody who knows demos knows what I'm doing. It's always risky to just kind of do a quick, quick uh, there. But the Trinity uh, portal site here, and again, I'm hiding the URLs, I'm hosting malware, right? It's, I don't wanna put those out there. But basically these zip files contained a number of different types of attacks that you don't normally get to see in most sort of uh, network intrusion prevention systems, deep packet inspection, or what, what Gartner's calling Trinity, um, basically full content inspection, which is kind of interesting. Basically, they're doing full analysis of stuff going to your client and coming from your client to make sure it's not being exploited. So client-side attacks, documents, uh, hostile web files, even things like embedded content inside your, 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 your files from websites. Now, normally I don't see these kind of alerts because I'm not getting attacked all the time, right? But the cool thing about these things, these aren't alerts. These are things Trinity's taking care of that you don't have to worry about unless it came from your network in the, uh, in the first place. One of the other things I like about Trinity is that for any of the traffic that they've collected, well, they, tra they collect all your traffic. They, by default, it's three days of, of uh, full PCAP. You can go and query anything you want and bring that back. Now, this has a lot of interesting ramifications for people who want to do secure VPNs and secure access to the internet. Now, I'm accessing Trinity over OpenVPN. Normally, they deploy by turning on break and inspect in your enterprise and then taking your Fortinet firewall, your Palo Alto firewall, your, your F5, whatever it is that's on your perimeter gateway, and basically doing a connection to their center and uh, analyzing your traffic. Really easy to deploy, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. But I spend time showing people this because this is fairly advanced technology that's actually neutralizing a lot of basic attacks and also some of the nation state attacks that are, that are out there. So if you're using a VPN provider, you really need to ask them, look, are you actually doing anything with the traffic you're carrying, or are you simply moving it from me to that point over there? Now, if you're using that to, because you want to show up in South, uh, South America, uh, England, whatever, and you know watch Netflix, great. We all get that you can go over VPN and show up in other countries. But if you're using a VPN to be secure, you have to understand what that company is, is doing and ask these kind of questions. Now, one other thing I want to show is, a, is another demo of one of our, our products that we've invested in. It's a company called Enclave. Now, this Enclave company is a more of a traditional stealth overlay, zero trust network. Now, I say more traditional because one of the things that the Enclave folks have done is they've pulled together this zero trust network access website where they're tracking 91 different vendors. And they just kind of show all the different ways that you can encrypt traffic from point A to point B and do things like bring them to your cloud apps, bring them to your enterprise apps, audit them, and so on. But for the most part, what Enclave does for me is I get to have all my systems and I basically get to control which systems can talk to which systems on which ports. And why that's important, it's because some of the systems that I'm hosting are hosting at cloud providers. I don't wanna have any open ports to do that. Or for my home lab, I don't wanna have a, an open VPN target. I don't have my Fortinet VPN that can be targeted. I don't wanna have anything that can be targeted at all. And this is a major, major use case of zero trust. Not only are you, are you talking about- I'm bringing... going to break in again and offer some more clarity to Ron's explanation. These past few years, we've had an increase in Chinese exploitation of edge devices, routers, VPNs, and firewalls. Edge device exploitation is hard to detect and much more difficult to investigate. For example, earlier in 2024, Velexity discovered exploitation of two different zero-day vulnerabilities in the Avanti Connect Secure VPN. If you have any internet-facing open ports allowing web management or VPN access, it's a question of when and not if they will be targeted to break into your network. 
Modern Zero Trust solutions like Enclave enable secure remote access to data centers and networks without any open ports that can be attacked. People who are authenticated with the right access control to the right point, but you're removing an attack surface from, uh, from the internet. Now, the way I like to, to kind of really show this, what I've done, and this will take a second to describe, is I'm using Enclave, and I've got some computers where I want to them to basically, basically have the browser you know, go through Trinity or the browser go through some of my other tech stacks like, like Threader. And what I've done is I've set up Enclave so I can exit at different points of my different points of security stack. And this is kind of interesting because for the most part, this browser right here is working on uh, the Trinity and they're hosting here. They're in a, not showing the full IP address, but they are actually shown in this, this network here. But I'm gonna pull up my Firefox browser, which is coming out of my home uh, IP address right there. Now, I'm not, of course, I'm, I'm obscuring things right here, but I got two computers doing the, where am I? What is I? What is my IP tiny thing? And I'm coming out of different spots and that's kind of interesting. Now, why spend all that time showing that to the general public? Well, I'm talking about a couple different things here, right? I showed you with Trinity that you can actually do full content inspection and kind of remove stuff there. But with a little bit of, you know, and routing and network analysis, you can, or network configuration, you can actually do a lot more than just use a quick VPN and pop out of different spots on the internet. You can actually control how you get access to certain things and how you get access to, to your systems that are important. And this is something that you should be asking of all your VPN providers. As we sort of see this blend, if I go back to that uh, website that um, uh, Enclave put together here, Zero Trust Network Access, there, is, there are so many different types of uh, companies out there that are basically doing combinations of, uh, of gateways, zero trust meshes. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. You know, do these companies carry your traffic like Trinity does? Well, if they're going to carry traffic like a Zscaler or something like that, what are they doing to that traffic, right? Or are they simply allowing you to tunnel and get to where you need to go to your cloud apps, to your uh, on-prem apps, to your home labs, to, you know, whatever that is. Um, and that's really important for you to think about as, as a user. Now, why spend all that time showing Trinity Cyber and showing Enclave? It's because I really want you to take two main points from this demonstration. So one, if you're using a VPN, you have to understand, is that VPN providing anything other than keeping your point A and point B private, right? Are they going to do any break and inspect analysis of your traffic? Are they going to do any advanced analysis of documents? Are they going to do any advanced analysis of the traffic coming in and out of your, your network? Again, I'm happy for people to go see Trinity Cyber, but this is the future, right? You need to understand that if you're just going to tunnel encrypted traffic everywhere, that you have to make guesses on the outside. And Trinity's way of doing full content inspection is I stuff something I believe in and it's something I really think that uh, we need to look more of. But the second thing is this. If you're running a small business, if you're running a big business and you have all this cyber stuff that the industry keeps talking about, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to stop having any remote IP addresses on your network. We hear a lot in small business about people having exposed Windows remote desktop services. It's the same thing with VPNs. If you're using old VPN technology that has a service and a port that your VPN users are coming to, that technology is dated. I'd love for you guys to take a look at Enclave, but I'm also showing you lots and lots and other different types of companies out there who basically have this sort of ephemeral way to tunnel into your network without having a targetable remote interface. So I want full content inspection and I want everybody to stop having their remote interfaces. If you, if you don't get rid of those remote inf interfaces, they are gonna get compromised. If you happen to have a vendor that hasn't been hit, and we've had Cisco hit, we've had Fortinet hit, we've had Avante hit, we've had a lot of different vendors hit, they're gonna get hit someday and you really need to kind of have that technology to do that. All right, so having said that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the 3D animations. I hope it was fairly clear. These are interesting things to kind of communicate with the general public. I'm Ron Gulit, Gulitech Adventures. I hope you have a great week. Thank you.